there are very few quite as confusing things in amateur astronomy as filters, especially when it comes down to visual and astrophotography filters. But don't worry, until the end of this video you will know exactly how to invest your hard-earned cash and which filters to buy depending on your possibilities. First, let's cover the types of filters that we find in our astronomy circles. I have a list because I couldn't remember them. Neutral density filter, polarized filter, color filters, many different color filters, <laughs> sun filters, and while we are at it, white light filter, hydrogen alpha filter, calcium K filter. UVER cut filter, that stands for ultraviolet and infrared cut filter. We have infrared pass filter, we have ultraviolet pass filter, we have ultra high contrast filter, also known as UHC filter. We're not done yet. Broadband UHC filter, CT light suppression filter, or narrowband UHC filter. Wait, there's a line UHC filter, there's an oxygen 3 filter, there's a hydrogen alpha nebula filter, there's a hydrogen beta nebula filter, there's a sulfur 2 nebula filter. And these are mostly for visual use. <laughs> I'm not even going to start with astrophotography filters, because we don't do that on this channel. Boy, that escalated quickly. Well, where do we take it from here? You might think that if you get a nice book, that's by the way a beautiful book, we'll find everything that you need to know about filters in this book, right? Wrong, my friends. Just two paragraphs in this entire book about filters, so from that point of view, completely useless. Other than that, it's a very nice book. Well, you might say, it's just a piece of glass, literally. Look how small it is. You can just buy a bunch of them, have a look through your telescope and keep the ones that work and the ones that don't, right? Wrong. Let's have a look. $300 for the most recommended filters, just to get you started with 1.25 inch. If you want to buy 2 inch, oh my god, $600. Well, what do we do now? As usual, we do some research, we do some science, I share with you my first-hand experiences, and by the end of the day, you will know which filters to buy. As you can see here, I don't have that many filters. This means I did my homework, I tried really hard to get the most value out of my money. I didn't want to invest hundreds of dollars into filters. So let's take it one by one. First, let's cover the cheap and simple ones. We start with neutral density filters. A neutral density filter is this, quite literally a pair of sunglasses. You can put them literally on your eyes and look to at the moon through your telescope, although it may seem kind of strange for passers-by that you're using sunglasses at night. Or you can have this one and put it in front of your eyepiece. What we have here is also called as a polarizer filter. It has two lenses. Each of these is a polarized piece of glass, or maybe it's plastic, doesn't matter. And when you turn them, you can regulate the intensity of the light going from about 20% to all the way to 90%. It's quite useful because it lowers the intensity of the light as well as reduces the glares because it's polarized. I highly recommend it and it's pretty cheap on AliExpress, you will find the link below. It's very useful when looking at the Moon, Jupiter, Mars, all of these objects which are very bright, very a big glare. Also looking at the Sun with a white light filter, it's really really helpful. Why they are called neutral density? No idea. No idea what density has to do anything with light, but you will find this in filters very often. They use a lot of names, a lot of names for filters which are very, very similar and have a very similar function. Should you buy a regular neutral density filter? 
I don't think so. I just find it a waste of money to buy all kinds of filters. All you need is this double polarized filter, which you just turn and it reduces the intensity of the light. Next on the list, we have so-called color filters. I got this one for free with one of my eyepieces. That's how cheap they are. You can literally find them for like $3 a piece. I'm being told they're quite useful to see some features on Mars, Jupiter, uh, the moon, for example, on Mars, you would use a blue filter on Jupiter and Saturn, you would lose, you would use uh, orange or yellow filter. I don't like using them. Maybe yes, maybe you will find some more features on the planets by using these filters. But at the end of the day, I'm more of a tourist observer, if you know what I mean. I like to enjoy the view. I'm not here to ease out any possible detail that I can and turn the whole planet red or orange, blue or yellow or whatever. Another good useful thing they have is if you have some kind of a relatively bad refractor telescope and there is a lot of violet streaks, it will help you if you get some kind of a green or yellow filter to reduce those achromatic aberrations. Next on the list we have sun filters as I mentioned. With sun filters, the most beautiful ones are unfortunately hydrogen alpha which is very very expensive and requires most of the time a specialized telescope refractor at that for us who, who like to use the Psonians, we typically use white light filters as you can see this one is quite big it goes in front of the telescope very important if you ever find a filter which goes in the eyepiece and it claims it's a sun filter you should not use it it's quite dangerous. This is from my old telescope. I'm still waiting for Bader, who produces the film of these filters to produce a bigger uh, piece of, of that so I can build a filter for my 12 inch. But for now, I will just look sadly at this one and not be able to observe the sun with my full aperture. What can you do? You can buy these from AliExpress. Again, I can send you the link below. Check it out. They come ready, just like this. Unfortunately, for apertures only up to 215 millimeters, which I assume for most of you, it will be quite, uh, quite sufficient. Now, these were the simplest of filters that you can have. It simply reduces the amount of light and based on that, you enjoy the view. Now, before we go into the other specialized filters, it's really important to understand how exactly light works and why these filters are targeting only certain pieces of light. What you see here is the light spectrum. On both sides, you have infrared and ultraviolet light. This light is not visible through our own eyes, so for visual purpose, usually we don't have to care too much about it. But if you like to do some simple imaging, like myself, like of the moon, of the sun, of the planets, it's very helpful to have an ultraviolet and infrared cut filter. This filter cuts everything that is outside of the visual spectrum of the light. For some imaging of the planets, you might find it useful also to use the infrared and ultraviolet pieces but this is really more about advanced imaging and if you're a beginner or even intermediate, I wouldn't bother too much about it just yet. In that case, you need to use infrared pass filter, ultraviolet pass, I mean, too complicated of a story for this uh, short video. Another very nice use you can have of this one is when observing the sun visually, just in case, just as a precaution, just as uh, a nice insurance policy. I always put this one on top of my eyepiece to filter any kind of ultraviolet which may or may not bleed through this uh, uh, white light filter. You never know, better safe than sorry. It is literally invisible, it doesn't in any way uh, prevent normal light from reaching, so it doesn't hurt to have this one on when observing the sun through any means. Now the rest of the spectrum, as you may or may not know, when you start to break down the white light it turns into colors and you have our regular colors we have the rainbow why this is important this is important because there are a lot of deep sky objects which 
emit light only in very 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 specific parts of this spectrum. Notably, there are three main emission lines which you find in many of these objects, especially in beautiful nebula like the Orion, the Veil Nebula, the Ring Nebula, all of these beautiful objects you will find they emit light only in certain wavelengths. These are oxygen 3, hydrogen alpha and hydrogen beta. These are the three main ones which we care about when doing visual work. And to be honest, it's actually only two that we care about mostly. Hydrogen beta and oxygen 3. Now, people have come up obviously with solution to get a filter which will let only these pieces of light through and this will allow you to see, of course, better just that object and filter any kind of light pollution around you. So these filters, which target only these emission lines of this nebula, are called UHC filters. Ultra high contrast filters. It's a lot of marketing, a lot of <laughs> branding, a lot of names. But as long as you focus on which part of this spectrum the filter is filtering, when buying a new filter, you should be fine. Problem is, when buying a new filter, not many brands offer you a specific image of the spectrum of what kind of um, performance they are offering. In this case, uh, we have a really nice uh, website. You can check it again on the link below, which will give you some of the best brands when it comes down to UHC filters. There we can pick some kind of a filter which has a nice performance uh, based on your budget, based on your possibilities and take it from there. So let's have a look at the performance of some of these and which one I have. What I have here is the Angelize UHC filter. I have the 2 inch and 1.25 inch. It's called a broadband filter because it has about 50 nanometers of uh, width. It's not ideal, but hey, uh, this one costs $17. If you want to tighten it a little bit and focus exactly just on the pieces of the nebula that is emitting, well, you have to pay $100. <laughs> and then what happens if you want to target only a specific line, and they are also called line UHC filters, you will need to pay another $100 for oxygen 3, and another $100 for Hydrogen Beta. So in total, if you want to have the perfect experience when it comes down to filters, you need to invest at least $300. If you have the money and you want to buy some, I will highly recommend that you use this nice tool to make sure that you're buying a filter which has been laboratory tested and you're really getting what you paid for. There are many brands out there and there is no guarantee exactly how that filter will be performing. Now does it work in real life? I mean let me tell you this. When I was starting without an UHC filter, I was trying to fight the North American Nebula, I couldn't see anything and I was at a portal 3 sky, so quite dark. Then once I got my 2 inch Angel Eyes UHC filter. I tried uh, again and completely by chance I actually discovered a piece of the Veil Nebula. It was literally invisible without a filter and with filter it was very very easy to see even to a beginner. So this one it cost me about $40 the 2 inch version and it works really 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 well. I know some people will say the budget versions of the UHC filters are a waste of money. I completely disagree. Now, I'm sure if you pay $200 for a little bit tighter, narrow band filter, the view will be even more contrasty. But hey, I mean, even with the budget one, already you are reducing a lot of the light that you don't need. So, they definitely work. They don't work as much as we would like to. But at the end of the day, I saved a lot of money and I still saw all of these objects. And again, I'm not the type of person that needs to see the absolute maximum that you can see maybe someday i will buy them ah uh, i don't know i don't know it's a lot of money <laughs> 300 dollars for the three main filters i don't know i'm pretty happy with the uhc so far so we will see we will see and the last one i didn't cover if you go online you will find it under the name cls city light uh, suppression filter in theory this filter should 
Eliminate only the city light pollution and let everything else in. Sounds like the perfect dream, right? <laughs> You're in the middle of the city and you can observe as if you are in the middle of the woods. Not quite, not quite. Back in the day before LED lighting, this was partly true because most of the light pollution came from cities, uh, from uh, sodium vapor and mercury vapor lamps. And these were again emitting light in very specific wavelengths. And if you design the filter to get rid of those, then obviously you would end up with everything else. Problem is, look at these pictures from the other night that I took at the top of the hill here from my city. As you can see, most of the light coming from the city is with all kinds of colors and intensity. It's not anymore coming just from a couple of sources. So these uh, city light suppression filters, unfortunately, in modern cities full of LED lights are no longer uh, very effective. It doesn't hurt to try, I guess. They are pretty cheap, so give it a try. But yeah, I, I'm not holding my breath that you will have a big success there. And that's really all there is to filters. It's quite simple, actually. Yeah? <laughs> when you cut through all of that marketing, all of that PR, all of that branding, it's very, very simple. Remember, there are just two main emission lines for visual use from the nebulas. You can either target to see both of them, or you can either target to see one of them. And you end up with three main filters, UHC, Oxygen 3 and Hydrogen Beta. <laughs> very simple, unfortunately also very expensive. That's why us budget-minded uh, folks, we just buy a broadband UHC for literally $17 and enjoy the view. I'm not buying one until I have the possibility to test it extensively and see if it's worth it or not. I did have the chance to look through some of them very briefly. I was not entirely impressed. I'm sure it was better, but yeah, it was not $100 better. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you might want to check also a video that I will be uploading very soon about my favorite eyepiece, Max Vision, also called as Explore Scientific 82 degrees 11 millimeter. With these filters, I was looking at the Swan Nebula and yeah, the Swan Nebula was absolutely amazing with 82 degrees. It was basically double when using the filter even in Portal 3 skies. Talk to you next time. It's Christmas around here, so Merry Christmas to everybody. And if I don't release any new videos until the end of this year, Happy New Year as well.